This programme is for entertainment purposes. Jeez, here. <laughs> Satanic rituals, disappearing phantoms and a lost bride await the most haunted team in West Wickham. Welcome to Most Haunted. Behind me is an elaborate cave system that was built for a secret society of wealthy men. It's also said bizarre rituals took place here. Along these dark tunnels which take you further underground, strange shapes have been seen floating towards unsuspecting visitors. With paranormal sightings in abundance, we have to uncover the mystery of the Hellfire Caves. The West Wickham Caves are a series of tunnels excavated in the late 1740s and 1750s to give unemployed farm workers jobs quarrying chalk to build roads. It's said that Sir Francis Dashwood, the second baronet, held secret meetings of the famous Hellfire Clubs in the caves. Hellfire Clubs were notorious, thought to be the home of sexual rights, orgies, abuse of alcohol and Satanism. Now the caves are open to the public, and since visitors have been coming here, many ghosts have been seen. The caves have always been part of my life. My father used to bring us here as children, and we used to run down with candles, often when the lights weren't working. Or well, we wouldn't do running. If you ran with a candle, it, it, would, it would blow out, and then there'd be lots of screams. So you had to walk very, very slowly and carefully. And if, a, if a puff of air came around the corner, you'd have to stop and let the candle settle. The caves were actually built in the, in the mid-18th century, so that's nearly 300 years ago. Uh, so they've been here a very long time. Um, but I think there was a period of about 200 years between 1780 and sort of probably 1950 uh, when nothing happened to them and they, they were blocked off and they were considered dangerous and evil places. There were some very famous people involved with Sir Francis Dashwood. John Hogarth, the illustrator, Paul Whitehead, the famous poet, even the son of the Archbishop of Canterbury, all came down here to join in the Hellfire Club. In those days, it was a bit like sex and drugs and rock and roll, but without the rock music. There would be a vast amount of drinking down here, debauchery. Women were also allowed down here as well. There was an inner temple of at least 12 men dressed in long white flowing robes, but the actual, the abbot as he was known that was down here, wore a scarlet robe with rabbit skin around the cuffs and around the hood. There was probably Satanism, devil worship, terrible things probably went on down here. This is the main part of the caves, the banqueting hall, where supposedly a lot of debauchery took place. It's said that a young girl was lured down here on the pretext of getting married. It was a cruel joke that went horribly wrong. And ever since then, the ghost of this young girl has been seen wandering through the caves in a Victorian wedding dress. There's a young girl known as Suki. She was reputedly a housemaid at the local pub, the Georgian Dragon. She was enticed down here by some lads, told that her betrothed was waiting for her. He was going to elope with her, and she came down here wearing a wedding dress. When she arrived, of course, her betrothed wasn't here, just a group of lads. They started to taunt her. She picked up a stone and threw it at them. One of the lads picked up the stone and threw it back. Unfortunately, the stone hit her between the eyes she fell to the floor, dead. And they say that her tormented soul, her spirit, still wanders down these tunnels.
before we opened it for tourists as a tourist attraction, and when we did that, we had to make it more secure. The river Styx used to separate the main part of the body of the caves from the inner temple, which is the very, very bottom chamber. And as religious belief had it, the river Styx was the river that separated the real world from the underworld. And so if I wasn't going to stay anywhere, it would be in the inner temple, which is the very bottom chamber. All this devil worship that probably went on here was epitomized in the fact that down below, directly beneath the church, was what was known as the inner temple. This was looked upon as hell. And the church at the top, of course, was referred to as heaven. How many sacrifices may have taken place here, nobody will ever know. How many young children may have disappeared, never to be seen again, we'll never know. There's also the story of Paul Whitehead, the poet. He was a member of the Hellfire Club, and when he died, he left 50 pounds to Sir Francis Dashwood to have his heart put into an urn and stored here at West Wickham. Someone stole it many, many years ago, but the urn is still here. It's down here behind some iron bars. And I believe his ghost still wanders these tunnels obviously looking for his heart. Throughout this amazing structure, the apparition of a man wearing Victorian clothing has been seen following people until he's noticed when he suddenly vanishes. Could he have been one of the many workmen that dug these caves? Or could he have been a victim of the notorious Hellfire Club? We have 24 hours to find out. I'd be fascinated to see if the most haunted crew find or, or see or get any sign of any ghost. I think they're being a bit wet going with cameras and electronic aids. I think they should really do it just with candles and nothing else. And then I think they would be very, very more frightened than they might otherwise be, particularly if they were separated and left on their own in different parts of the caves. Phil Wyman, our paranormal investigator, had spent some time earlier at the caves to conduct the baseline tests. It's said that the tunnels stretch for over half a mile, and with so much ground to cover in total darkness, the tests seem to have taken their toll on Phil. What's the matter? You're shaking like a leaf. I know. Um, my head is spinning round and round. I feel really dizzy. Um, my eyes won't focus on anything. If I look at something to focus on it, it moves. There's nothing wrong with my stomach. Um, when I walk, I get really dizzy and nauseous. I feel as I'm going to be sick. And that's since being in there? That's since being down there. I was down there before um, dinner, and I started feeling really sick before. When you did the baseline test yesterday, you were all right, or did you feel a little bit funny? I was fine. Um, it has got a, a strange atmosphere down there, and it has been known for people to feel sick after being in haunted locations, uh, especially ones like we're doing today. Um, I've never been affected by it before, though. Uh, I'm not saying it is paranormal, but it could be. I've not eaten anything that would make me feel sick. Um, I had a light lunch and I felt sick before I even had anything to eat. So. Well, I, I suggest what you do is just sit, uh, maybe sit in the van, sit mm. warm and see how you go, okay. and um, don't, don't worry, right. just get better. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, somebody go and sit down. <laughs> Poor Louie. We were all concerned about Phil. Why was he feeling so unwell? It seemed the caves were already starting to have an effect. Would the rest of the crew be able to cope with the claustrophobic conditions in the dark tunnels later on? We were pleased we had asked psychic artist Judith Cooney to join us. There are many different ways that psychics can communicate with spirits. Judith lets the entity she's communicating with move her hand over the page to create a picture of how that person once looked. We were all eager to see what kind of spirit she would pick up on and hopefully she'd be able to tell us who or what was affecting Phil. I feel as if he would have been possibly the abbot um, or uh, I was picking that up or the master as he was calling himself, I am the master. Mm -hmm. But he didn't actually give me a name or anything as such. And is he, is he active here? Yes, he's very much active here. He's very much um, in control of all the other events that take place here. Is he 
a nice person or not so nice? I would say a very aggressive person, not a pleasant person at all. I certainly didn't relish the thought of being in the caves with a troublesome spirit. Our expectations were high and the crew and I were certainly looking forward to our investigation. All day we had been a little nervous, but as the dark sky turned black, we were becoming more and more apprehensive. To help us find out if the caves were definitely haunted, we asked psychic Derek Akora to join us. Now we were ready to walk the tunnels of the Hellfire Caves. There's an energy, most definite, and this energy is active. It's not residual. Right. And this energy is of a young woman. And I feel with her, there seems to be like this uh, overpowering um, upset, this overpower to her, not to me, but this like, and a disillusionment. And also these words, because Sam gives me these words, um, disappointment, disappointment, and um, a, a feeling of hopelessness. Can Sam give us a name at this point? Not at the moment, but okay. um, I'm just, I've been asking for a mental description until hopefully if we can see her, mm -hmm. if she shows herself. But very young, you know. Um, young. I'd say could be, I don't know, 15, 16, right. maybe 17, but quite young. I'm hoping maybe as we go along, um, Sam will furnish me as we get in. Mm -hmm. As the energy become closer to where she is. Did you hear something then? Yeah. Did you hear that? I heard it. Was that from behind me? It was again? like a cry to yeah, me. Like a little cry, like a, like a woman's cry. Yes. Yeah. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Did anybody it else hear that? It wasn't there, wasn't it? Yeah. Let me go and have a look. Yeah. It was faint, but it was definitely yeah. back up there. Yes. And we told yes. everybody it's out of the caves <coughs> yes. to be very quiet. I mean, we are about 100 yards away from the entrance, so it's quite a long way. Distance, yeah. 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 Um, there are. I have to say that there were a couple of bats that we saw um, coming into, you know, they yeah. flew in maybe about half an hour ago. I think now, they, make a, they, make, they make a kind of crying noise though, don't they? It's a high pitched. Bats don't make that. Yeah, and it's very short though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The bat noise. It's yeah. very short. Yeah. That seems to be a bit yeah. like really a second and a half or yeah. two. It seemed more human than. Yeah. 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 There's no there's no one up there. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Derek was leading us further down into the caves. He'd already picked up the spirit of a young girl. We needed to know who she was, but were there any other spirits present? Paul? 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 Sam Paul? Paul? Paul White? Paul White? It's he, he's here, Paul White. Paul Whitehead. Paul Whitehead? Did you hear him? Yeah. You're okay. He's here. His energy's here. Paul Whitehead. It sounded like something on there. On there, yeah. Because that is obviously metal. It's just a. Uh... Who's that? That's one of our lot, isn't it? Yeah. Like yeah, that, that, wasn't was it? It sounded yeah. just like that, didn't it? Yeah. Something That's warm. How warm is that? Where's that coming from? The warmth on that. Take your glove off the deck. I can't really stone. feel it. I've just literally picked it up. Absolutely, yeah. It is. It's quite warm. It doesn't feel warm to me. Paul. You've got an energy of a Paul Whitehead here. Okay. Who's, who's Paul Whitehead? Um. Uh, Sam, who is he? Who is this person? Go on. He, he was? Yeah. Does he? Does he? Yeah. He belongs here like the fabric of the stone. He belongs here like the fabric of the stone. Right. He's, um, he's got more say in the labyrinth of these tunnels than anyone. 
According to Derek, the spirit of Paul Whitehead was indeed with us and active. As we made our way towards what used to be the banqueting hall, the spirit of the young girl was making her presence known to Derek. I feel in this area, the young um, lady, I feel, would have um, been drawn. And as if she's waiting, she's arrived, she's waiting. Then, to her surprise, her shock, um, these three males. And they, there's a ridicule. Oh, it's coming in clearly now. The ridicule, and they're getting so angry, so angry. Oh, bless her, look at that. Okay. What's the connection, though, between her and the three men? I feel they were... Can you give me that clearly, Sam? They were jealous because she, she didn't have eyes for them. She had eyes for a man and he wasn't totally aware of her feelings. Mm -hmm. And these three beggars set her up and told her, is that in a note, in a letter, to meet this man here? Mm -hmm. And it was just a game, oh. a game to them. And she thought she was going to meet this man, a man of means, mm -hmm. a man of means. And she was promised, meet me here, the way it was worded, as if this man would take her away and marry her. Mm -hmm. She got angry. Now I know what she did. As we just see these pebbles here, more of you, in its time, there was a lot more things here. And she's just in a fit of temper because I feel as if I want to move in this area and just pick things up and it's run nice. at them and throw things at them. And... I feel that two of them reacted and threw something back and then she fell and the damage. Suki, so was that, what does Suk mean? Suki, Suki, Suki? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I don't know what that means. Suki, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Is that in connection with the girl? Yes, Sue, mm -hmm. okay. What period are we talking about here? Um, to 17 something. Mm -hmm. Can I replay something that was mm -hmm. given to me earlier and is now coming back? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm aware of these energies, the voices, the sounds, the, the mixture, as if people are enjoying themselves and they're screaming and laughter. And then suddenly, um, for people to be um, doing things um, to each other, uh, males with females and so on and so forth, it was like a free for all. Right. Sexually, that's yeah, what absolutely. Right, yeah, absolutely, okay. yeah. But it didn't start here. They gathered here for, you know, different periods, let's, different reasons. Let's walk on and see if you can pick up. So we've got basically, we're talking about the young girl. Yes, yes. And you've got the Paul, um, the spirit of Paul. Yes. If we keep going, maybe you'll pick up okay. other, other energies. Yes. Things seem to be coming clear. The ghost of the bride that has been seen so many times by staff members and visitors was more than likely to be the spirit of Suki, the young girl who'd been led down into the caves for a joke that went horribly wrong. The spirit of Paul Whitehead was intriguing to me. Why would the ghost of a famous poet be haunting these cold, dark caves? Now, as we're coming into this area now, um, what is, I want, what I wanted to actually say is now, coming to this energy, that there is a, a remembrance, a remembrance um, of Franz, Francis, Francis, and I, I believe that's first name, and it's like as if the energy of Paul is looking up to Francis, is, is carrying out, what's that, Sam? Carried out what Francis wanted to take place. And, um, you know what I feel like? I feel like a man without a heart. Mm -hmm. I feel like a man without a heart, if I'm a void of a heart. Is that, you know, physically speaking? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, hold on. Oh, why did you do that, Sam? I feel someone, someone's had the heart taken out. 
someone's had the heart physically taken out, I feel that the person whose heart was taken out um, is like roaming this labyrinth of caves um, coming back and saying, you know, where's my heart? Mm. What's happened to my heart? Mm. I trusted my heart to be in a certain place and it was taken. And who did this heart belong to? Yeah. Sorry. Who did the heart belong to? Sam? Paul. Paul. Right. What, the same Paul that you picked up earlier on? Sam says yes. Right. Paul. The heart was in a container because it was his wish uh, and, and then stolen uh, and taken. Right. So I feel like that brings his energy of spirit back time and time again. Um, you know, looking, so to speak, you know, in search of this um, theft of his physical past. Okay. So he's, he's still roaming around looking yes. for his physical heart. Yes, I feel he's, he, he is responsible for quite a lot of this um, whatever um, activity has been encountered is he active in these here? caves. If, if, I feel at times he is, yes. Yeah. Absolutely, he is. Our night vision cameras were the only source of light that we could use to show us the way around the caves. We all stuck together as we made our way further into the tunnels. I, I, feel, I don't know why, but I keep on getting um, the name Francis. Francis. I got that name earlier on did, yeah. at some point, and Francis would be... Um, I don't know whether he was... I'll use these words because I want to say it like the leader of the pack or the leader of. And that name, uh, Paul, that was mm -hmm. uh, coming on energy very strongly earlier, uh, would answer to him. Yeah. F Francis what? Say it again. Dashwood. Dashwood. Yeah. And those energies of this soul, okay, this person, uh, comes down here. Now, I know it's not grounded, and I know it's not a spirit active. It's coming in visitation, and if anyone was in the proximity of the area when they were, they would know and pick up, uh, and also there'd be a feeling of, um, I suppose, dread. Right. A feeling of dread. You, do, you were feeling a bit... You, you know, you felt sick today. I do feel sick, yeah. How do you feel now? I feel fine now. You do? Yeah, yeah it's... Um, I don't know... What's the matter? I thought I heard something behind me. Like Mate, I've been hearing. Is it? Can anyone else hear a thud? I just yes, heard a thud. Yes, yes, yes. I, I heard it. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I Should we just stand quietly for mm. a minute? Yeah. No one move your feet. <clears throat> How's everybody feeling? Fine. Yeah. I feel quite comfortable down here. Actually. Yeah. Quite surprised. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got to admit, I think this location is going to test a lot of people on the crew tonight. Do you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never been, honestly, I can say that, I've never been to a, a location that's darker than this when no, there's I no haven't. lights on. Mm -hmm. No. I don't think I have either, actually, no, while this doing is this. This is the darkest. Yeah. I, have to, I have to say, though, even though it's that dark, um, doesn't mean that we're going to experience anything more because it's darker. Mm. Do you see what I mean? That's you know what right. I Absolutely all, I right. Think it, I think it's going to test us. Mm. Yeah. Let's move on. Come yeah. On. Yeah. The Hellfire Caves were so dark and claustrophobic, I couldn't wait to get out. Derek had other ideas. At the very bottom of the caves was the inner temple, where supposedly satanic rituals had taken place. So would Derek be able to confirm that this actually happened? Talk about a collection of souls at any given time, I think, for entrance uh, into here. Um, the name which Sam was giving me here, the energies of these souls, Hellfire. Yeah. Hellfire is right. here. Right. In this energy, right. Hellfire. The men, the men, these men used to get themselves, can I use basic words, mm -hmm. tanked up with mm -hmm. alcohol, and then anything could happen. And this is weird, Why? even to me. What? There's energies coming down this passageway, mm -hmm. stopping outside, and to look at them, it's like a procession of nuns. Mm -hmm. 
What is that, Sam? The nuns come down here. What was the f what was the function? Did they come down and pray? They were what? Okay, is that how I say it? These women, okay, were um, came down. I don't know what the f fantasy was, but came down into these uh, levels and dressed in the habit and what have you, and they weren't nuns. What was that? Strange? I don't know. They were not nuns. Mm -hmm. To help me with this, Sam. It's like now, as he opens up that um, picture to my mind's eye, it says that the habits and everything were taken off, and then suddenly there were certainly not nuns, mm. and and they were dressed up as nuns, but they were. Um, it's like they were here for like prostitution, mm -hmm. and the good time girls. Yeah. And they used the men used to um, ply them with the liquor. And, oh, what I saw earlier, I wouldn't really want to repeat, but mm -hmm. it was like three men at one given time. Um, uh, how do I use this word? Um, with one woman. With one woman. Right, OK. Well, should we head on back up that way? Yeah, OK. Yeah, I hate this It was time for the crew to split into smaller groups so that the long tunnels could be investigated thoroughly. Richard Felix, Phil, Tom and myself had decided to stay towards the middle part of the caves where the ghost of a woman wearing a wedding dress has been seen on a regular basis. Yep. Oh, I hate this bit. Was that you? That's Me? You. <laughs> Oh, great. We're probably heading right for it, aren't we? What? Is there another bat then? Or... No, there'll be bat, there'll be loads. <coughs> OK. This is... Oh, God. Turn your torch off. Turn your torches off. It's all right, that's just... Where are you, Richard? Are you there? Oh, God. This is one hell of a scary place, isn't it? Is. it? Let's just be quiet. Oh. Light anomalies, orbs, or spirit lights are believed to be one of the first stages of a ghost manifestation. Rarely seen by the naked eye, night vision cameras and digital stills cameras seem to be the only way to catch these strange lights. Carl, Rick and a new camera operator, Mauro, had opted for the bottom of the tunnels and the supposedly active inner temple. Even before they'd got there, things were already beginning to happen. Carl, what do you think you heard? Well, just thought I heard like a... I mean, lighter than that, wasn't it? This was, and all it was, was a lot of extremely rich people coming down and getting drunk and having oh, an And having an orgy. And I don't think, I think people have died here. So. Could have been a trick of light. Where? From the doorway? Probably the doors and doors. Turn the torch on here. Right there. Face, but it could be a circular thing. But we're talking, we are talking about this woman. Right, shh, now. If a bat comes down this bloody thing, that's why you sat there, Phil, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get hit in the head by a bat. Oh, could you imagine if it got tangled up in your hair? Oh, great, thanks a lot, Richard. <laughs> Come on, is there anybody here? Any spirit people here? Anybody that knew these caves well? If you can hear my voice, can you try and do something to show us that you can hear my voice? Can you make a noise? Can you show us a light, anything at all, to show us that you're here? Please. If 
there is something here. I don't think it's anything serious. I don't think it's anything to be worried about. I think it's everything's more, you know, fiction than fact. It's more stories and mm. actual events that took place. I just think it's all folklore surrounding the place, to be honest. Was that you? No. What was it? That was you, wasn't it? What? You touched my stomach. What? Touched your stomach? No, I'm just moving the hand He's got himself. And did you hit something? Not here, no. Just touched you? Right? He's, he's got himself. You didn't touch me here? No, I didn't touch you anyway. You've you, you just been touched? Yeah. Alright, oh, there you go. Shh, just heard something then. Are you here with us? The Inner Temple was a scary place, not just because of the mannequins. It was the thought of the satanic rituals that had taken place many years ago. I wanted to experience something paranormal in this dark chamber. Close. We didn't even know we were there. Love me. You do realise the significance of where we are, don't you? This is the inner temple, and 300 feet above us. Is the church of St Lawrence, and to the side of that is the mausoleum, where all the bodies have been interred. And if there was any uh, Satanism or black magic, this is the room where it would have been conducted. This is the place where they believed represented hell, and 300 feet above. The church represented heaven. Okay, you should be quiet. So we're in hell. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. <laughs> Is there anybody here in this room with us now? If there is anyone in here, would you please try and make contact with us? We may be able to help. Was that your echo? No, it wasn't. Paul Whitehead, are you here? <clears throat> Paul Whitehead, the poet, are you with us here tonight? Do you wish to make contact with us? Do you still wander down Hold here? Hold on. What? Hold on a second. What? Sweater. I was just filming you, and it felt like, that's why I was just checking where Tom is, it felt like something sort of bumped into my camera. Do you still wander down here? You still wander down here? Can you make a noise, Suki, if you're here? What was that? Did you hear that? No. Did anybody hear that? I heard it sort of... It was like a bang. A bang, yeah. Over in the left-hand corner. Again. I heard that. Again, did you hear that? No. Did you? Oh, Suki. Okay. There was a slight mood, there was a slight... Are you trying to make contact with us? Like, can I just, just say something? We're not going to hear anything if you're talking to at all. Yeah. I, mean, I, I want to hear that some as well. Yeah, so. no. There, mm. there was a slight bang again over to the left-hand side. Can you just sit here really quiet and see yeah. what happens again?
you hear that, Tom? It a, again, it was a muffled one. It's coming from that corner. It's like a slight bang. What if, oh, what if one of us went over into that corner? What's the matter? What's the matter? Something weird noise, you said. Well, what? Here. No, 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 it, was something, it wasn't anybody's feet, it was like... Or something like that. There was certainly something in the inner temple. We had all experienced various noises, and two crew members felt that they had been touched. One thing we did miss was the gate. It wasn't until we were editing this programme that we noticed the gate was open at the end of our vigil. It was closed behind us as we entered, and no one had touched it during our time inside the temple. It was a stiff, heavy gate that didn't move on its own. So who opened it? It was time for us to leave and let another group experience the caves. Richard Felix had decided to bring the rest of the crew down. Wendy, our location manager, was feeling apprehensive. Hey, Wendy, you're very brave. I can't believe I'm doing this. You're doing well. Be careful you don't slip, because as it goes down, the more it gets a little slow. See, can I just say, when, when I came in here, it was Phil this morning, we covered all the, the plaques up. That's right, yeah. And Phil and I couldn't go any further than this, because we just got, we were like, oh, no, 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 not going any further. Really? Yeah, it, and then we turned back and we sort of hurried out, and then, and then Carl asked me, to walk around with Judith while she sort of got a feel of the place. And we walked down and she stopped here and she got a really like strong sense from just just there. Um, and she said that she there was a guy called John, that she felt this guy called John was like guarding that something in this tunnel further sort of beyond yeah. you know where she saw him. So how do you feel now about having to go through here? Fine. Good. Come on. Yeah. That wasn't, that wasn't locked before, was it not? Yeah, it's not locked, it's just uh... Hi guys, we're back. He's the one I don't like. <laughs> He's what? Son? The one I don't like. Really? Which one is that, Richard? The one we're talking at is. He gives me the creeps. As does the monkey behind the cat. The baboon. Obviously. I have just seen an old. That's freaky. I'm sure I did. I got an orb. It sort of went diagonal across the screen, didn't it? There's another one. Can anybody hear any noises from out, out there? Nothing of great significance was caught in the tunnels. Most of the activity did seem to be centred in and around the inner temple. So does that mean the caves are haunted? It's been a long, hard night. Um, our expectations were great. My expectations were great. And I think we've pushed ourselves um, a lot more than we probably do on others because of the incredible venue that we were in and we continued right to the end going back over and over again in the vain hopes that we would eventually see something or capture something. I must admit um, when I knew we were going to do the Hellfire Caves um, my expectations were quite high of uh, capturing some paranormal activity. The place is very eerie, it's got quite a lot of history connected with it. 
Now when it came to do the vigils, unfortunately not an awful lot happened. There were the odd couple of noises, bangs, thuds, um, but they could have been attributed to any natural causes really. That's not to say it isn't haunted, it's just to say that you know, we had no evidence of it being haunted. I feel the most interesting spirit this evening in the investigation uh, was definitely the young lady. The young lady with this like sorrowful um, feeling to her. Um, the way she was manipulated seemingly, from what I gather, um, into um, these tunnels uh, with an expectancy of, of a, a change of her life. And then suddenly to find out through great disappointment that she'd been had. She has visited on many occasions, I feel, here in these tunnels, and she still continues to come and visit here. Although nothing huge happened, things did happen. There were noises. As far as we know, they are unexplained. And let's be honest, at the beginning of all this, if we'd heard things like that, we'd have been elated. But I suppose we've been spoilt because so many things have happened in the past. One of the events that happens on this investigation is that the whole crew hear a stone uh, hitting a gate. Paul White? Paul White? It's a Paul White! And it shocks them all, they're all a bit frightened by it. When they go and investigate, Phil finds a stone, um, and it does seem to be the one that might have made the noise, and when he picks it up, he feels as though it's actually warm, which would be unusual. Um, in, my, in my opinion, this, there's nothing particularly impressive about this. It could simply be a stone has fallen from, from the roof of the cave, hit the gate, but because everybody's kind of got these heightened emotions, then they interpret it as perhaps being something paranormal. That was you, wasn't it? What? You touched my stomach. What? Touched your stomach? No, I'm just moving the hands He's got himself. At one point, Mauro reports being touched on the stomach area. Um, and remember, this is his first investigation, the first one he's been on, so it's not that surprising if he is a little bit scared, a little bit frightened, and I do know from the rest of the crew that he was absolutely petrified when he was on this investigation. So it's not that surprising if he, if he interprets anything a little bit unusual as perhaps being paranormal, and of course it's going to frighten him. Um, also, looking at the tape, it does look as though he's carrying something underneath his jacket, which makes it very difficult for him to properly assess if something has touched him. On the face of it, the gate that seems to open on its own appears to be quite impressive. Um, but that's only if we can be sure that the gate actually has been closed properly and also that nobody actually did open and go through the gate or just open the gate at some point during the night but forgot about it. Now, if those two possibilities really can be ruled out, then what remains is a little bit of a mystery. The West Wickham Caves are not a place for the faint-hearted. It's cold, extremely dark, and some might say, haunted. Until the next time, sleep tight. Sightings. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs>